Hey there, let's talk about the Salem Witch Trials. If you see me looking down any one of the reasons is because I always bring my book so I can refer to it. So if you're like, what is she looking at? That's it. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the Salem Witch Trials. I think I said earlier that the witch trials happened in 1692, actually only in one year, and 19 people died. Most of them were women and most of them were hanged, but there were a few men who died in a few different ways that people were killed. And... It really happened just that one year and then it was over. And it was only 19 people, which many people think it was a whole lot more, but it was only 19 people. So let's talk about Cotton Mather. Okay, Cotton Mather is really, really famous for his histories. He's written a lot of biographies of millions of different kinds of people. He actually is one of the most prolific historians in American history, so he's kind of a cool, cool guy. Um, he was also a preacher, and nobody thought he would have been a preacher because he had a bad stutter. He also may have been bipolar. Even if you read in your book, it said that he went from moments of great ecstasy to moments of despair. And so a lot of historians have said he probably did have bipolar disorder. He also lived in his father's footsteps, not for any reason other than Increase Mather, his father, was the president of Harvard. Cotton Mather really, really wanted to be the president of Harvard, but his entire life, it eluded him. He also had a really tragic life in that and he had 15 children, and only two of them outlived him. Um, one of his wives went crazy and died pretty early, so he had a really, a really kind of interesting, sad life. Then, also, his place in history is kind of weird, because while he was a prolific historian and actually did a pretty good job, he is also kind of labeled as this guy who started the Salem Witch Trial. He did not start the Salem Witch Trial, but we'll talk about that. He actually never attended any of the witch trials. He was reportedly at some of the hangings. So we'll talk about Martha Carrier. But one of the things that started it, and one of the reasons Cotton Mather is so, I guess, guilty in that whole witch trial debacle was that Cotton Mather wrote this book called Memorable Providences. And in Memorable Providences, he talked about getting rid of witches. And he talked about a certain, a certain girl who'd been possessed by demons and how witches were among them. And actually, if you look at the first part on page 328, a people, in God, a people of God in the devil's territory, one of the things we see is there's a huge paranoia here. He basically says, we are people of God and we are under attack by Satan. So we already see this huge paranoia. We know that he wrote this novel, or not, not novel, I mean, he actually said it was not fiction, this nonfiction piece about witches. So he kind of started people thinking about this, even though what they did here didn't have much to do with Cotton Mather. And so we have that first part that's really paranoid, and then we have Martha Carrier. Now, mind you, one thing is that Cotton Mather was not here. So this is all transcribed, basically from somebody else's account. It's kind of weird, but meh. Um, I love, I love this piece, though. It's one of my favorite pieces that we read all semester because Martha Carrier is so interesting. She, she gets up there. I feel like she's unapologetic. She actually, the only thing it says she says is on page 331 where she says, it's no matter though their necks had been twisted quite off. And so what she's saying here is that somebody accused her of kind of cranking people's necks, and she's like, it doesn't even matter. I could have twisted their heads right off. It doesn't really matter. So she always was a little bit brazen. She actually had already, before this time, been accused of being a witch because in Andover, a smaller place where she lived before, um, she her family got this big case of smallpox. So this town got smallpox. There was 13 people who died. Seven of them were in her family. So people said, oh, Martha Carrier, because she's already disagreeable, caused this to happen because she's a witch. So this has already happened a little bit, so she's, she's got some issues. Then she also married somebody who was below her social status. That was an issue. He was younger than her, which was an issue. And she had an illegitimate child by him, which was also an issue. So she, she already had kind of a bad reputation with the people in Salem. And so there's all that. But let's talk about the piece. So... One of the things I think you see in here is that several times people say they saw her spirit. Nobody says Martha Carrier was actually there. They said they saw her spirit. And so basically what they're saying is they saw her ghost. They had, she had sent out her ghost to stand on the one guy's chest to kill the cows, but she never physically did anything and they couldn't prove it. All they had done was seen her spirit. This is called spectral evidence. 
obviously spectral evidence is almost impossible to prove. So spectral evidence, not great, not great for basing a case on which you're going to kill somebody right? So I want to talk about a few people. I love this piece because it's set up like a list, number one. Um, so it's super easy to read, super short too. <laughs> um, but I love the list format and I think some of these people are so funny. Probably my favorite is Ben Abbott. So Ben Abbott is the guy who had these sores that had gallons of corruption on page 331, gallons of corruption. And if you looked at the bottom, hopefully you did, we see that this was pus. I love that corruption and pus are the same thing. It's so gross. Anyway, so he had these sores. Um, he had one in his groin, which is my favorite. Um, and he had to get it lanced and all the pus came out. Disgusting. Okay. I feel like we can hardly blame Martha Carrier for this because we have to think again, 1692. Indoor plumbing, no. Hot water, no. So where were people taking showers? Who knows, who knows where people were taking showers. Um, but the main thing is they weren't showering often. And so, I mean, I feel like we could blame these sores on just about anything, I'll let you use your imagination, but I don't think they can easily be blamed on Martha Carrier. So there's that guy. Then there's Alan Toothaker, who also is a good favorite of mine. He's the guy who was fighting with Mar Martha Carrier's son. They're just in a brawl. And then all of a sudden, he sees Martha Carrier's spirit on him as he got knocked down. So it sounds like this guy who was just like, got beat in a fight, really. He got beat in a fight. And instead of saying, I got beat in a fight and I couldn't get back up, he said, I was knocked down and Martha Carrier was standing on my chest and she wasn't allowing me to get back up. So, problems, right? So, then we have the situation with the cows who died in preternatural ways. Um, that means they died in kind of um, spooky ways, I suppose, unnatural ways, like they seemed supernatural. But anyway, so they died. And I just think to myself though, again, we're in 1692, we don't have animal doctors that are readily available, that this guy or these cows probably died of many different things. Diseases, there was smallpox was happening among the people. I'm sure there could have been cow diseases that were causing these cows to get sick as well. So I don't think it's really that big of a jump to say that she didn't cause any of this. And obviously I think most of you say, well, she didn't cause any of this. Um, then there were the few people who said they actually had just seen her at a witch, witch's meeting. One of the reasons people did that was because they didn't and they didn't want to be charged with witchcraft themselves. So if they had been charged with witchcraft, if they said somebody else was a witch and they totally forced me into being a witch, then that person was exonerated, excuse me, that person was exonerated and the person they accused was then tried for witchcraft. So if several people said Martha Carrier was the witch, then she was the one who was guilty of it. Okay, the last thing I wanna tell you about this is I want you to pay close attention to the very last section on page 333, it says, Mem Memorandum, this rampant hag, Martha Carrier, was a person of whom the confessions of the witches and her own children among the rest agreed that the devil had promised her she should be the queen of the Hebrews. Okay, a few things that are interesting here. It sounds, he, Cotton Mather, calls her a rampant hag, almost saying he feels like she's guilty. She hadn't even been tried here, but he said she was guilty. Um, and then this thing is really great because some of the other things that happened here was now we look back at Cotton Mather and we're like, oh, he was terrible because he did, he took part in this and he was so proud. He was so proud of himself for what happened here. So that's why his memory in history kind of goes down a little bit poorly. Now though, questions about Robert Califf. Okay. Robert Califf, not very known in history. He was not well known at all. Um, he... He was a scientist for the most part. Actually, I think he was a, a dressmaker too. Um, I think that's actually what he's more famous for. Anyway, so he wrote this one book and it was called More Wonders of the Invisible World, which is actually a play on Cotton Mather's book, Wonders of the Invisible World. So he says more wonders. And so in this book, really one of the main, the main points was this story about Margaret Rule. And Margaret Rule was a teenage girl, this teenage girl who, I guess, Caliph was there, Increase Mather was there, and Cotton Mather were there, right? So there's, this is how the story takes place. Okay, so this girl apparently was possessed by demons, and so in that possession, they were going to get Cotton and Increase to get the demons out. 
So what happens is Robert Califf accuses Cotton Mather and his father of molesting that girl. Now, when you think molestation, I think we think a lot worse than what he said happened here. Really, what he said happened here, this molestation, was he rubbed her stomach. Now, we do have to think, we're in Puritan times in the 1600s, so rubbing someone's naked stomach, some girl's naked stomach, would have actually been a pretty big offense. So, um, while I laugh at it, me and my students laugh at it sometimes because we're like, well, it's not really much of anything, it would have been a huge offense back then. Um, so, we have that. Now, one of the things that happens here is after that, we have, it all surrounds that. We have this letter where Robert Califf writes to Cotton Mather, this is what I saw. Cotton Mather writes back, they get into a fight. Cotton Mather's like, hey, come see me. Robert Califf says, hey, come see me. Cotton Mather says, hey, I will. And then nothing ever comes of it. So they never actually met up, which is, to me, not terribly surprising anyway. So we have that. Now, here are the problems with this. This is the only time, this account is the only time where anybody said that Increase or Cotton had ever done anything torrid or weird like that. And so most people think if there had a, if something had have happened, that probably it would have been reported more. Take with that what you will. I, I don't know. Um, also, some people said that one of the reasons that Robert Califf wrote this was he had this pretty good this pretty good reasoning for why spectral evidence and the witch trials were just a sham, right? He had a great reason, and obviously we see it and we're like, well, yeah, he had a great reason the witch trials were a sham. But one of the worst things is that instead of getting attention for saying they were a sham, a lot of people said that he added this part about cotton and increase. He added it to his novel basically to get attention, to get people to read the other part where he was saying it was a sham. People latched on to the part where he was molesting this young girl. So in history, it's, it's weird. It doesn't look great for Caliph in my opinion. Um, I don't know I don't know that I believe what he has to say. I mean, obviously I do believe that you don't depend on spectral evidence to kill someone, but it seems like he almost was using shock value to disparage this man's claims. Now, um, some interesting things that happened after this was because Cotton Mather was such a big guy and Robert Califf was pretty much a nobody, they wouldn't they wouldn't allow the Mathers would not allow this book to be published anywhere in Boston. So Beyond, beyond it not being published, his dad at Harvard had a book burning and burnt Caliph's book because of the claims of the molestation. So, it really was never really well known. And actually, when I started teaching this class, there was not even a Wikipedia entry about Robert Caliph, which I think is hilarious. There is one now if you want to go check. <laughs> um, but, so... It's kind of an interesting story, and I think one of the things that I would say is, who do you believe here? Who do you believe? I have my opinions. I feel like, personally, I believe Cotton Mather a little bit more as far as the molestation goes. Obviously, as far as there not being demons that were possessing everybody, I believe Caliph more. But the part of the story that we read was not about the demons. It was about the molestation. And just a side note, and then I will leave you, this hilarious thing that I read, and I want you to pay attention to Margaret Rule herself. She was a young girl. But one of the few things they say is, number one, she sleeps in bed all day long, right? And if you look at it, she doesn't eat or drink anything but rum. So we have this drunk teenager laying in bed all the time. And if you look at a lot of the times whenever she has her fits, it's when she's being visited by cute boys and then the boys say they're gonna leave or she says, I need the cute boy to come back. So she's a little bit of a flirt too. Um, and Probably, I don't know if she's possessed or not. Some people say she could have had alcohol poisoning. Some people say that she could have been epileptic. And actually, that's the thing they blame a lot of the witch trials on, the epilepsy. Um, the seizures sometimes made people look like they were possessed. And so she could have had that. So there's a, a ton of things that could have been going on here. But I think the main thing I wanted you to get out of this is to kind of look at it and be your own judge. What do you believe? And then always, like I have to do it myself, I have to go back and look at the, histor uh, the history of both of these pieces. So obviously I have a little bit more information. Now, these lectures are going to help you. When it happens that you have to write a paper, I promise they're going to help you. I know I sound like I'm bumbling on and on, but they really will help. So I hope you guys are watching these. Um, and I'm sorry if I'm nervous. I think I'm getting better at it. Anyway, okay, I'll let you go. Y'all have a good week, and I'll probably post two more next Wednesday. Thank you. Bye.